Where do you think mountain biking is going from here? Well, when you see how fast they go and how big the jumps are, I don't think you can push it much further. Yeah, but that's probably what they said in the past. But all you need is one or two renegades who can think in a different way. And what was once thought impossible all of a sudden becomes a reality. Look at people today like Dan Atherton. He's out there designing and building new courses for riders that is pushing the future of mountain biking into unknown territory. So that's why we're in Wales then. To meet Dan, get a bit of school in and see where the sport's going. Well, it's a nice spot for it. Well, if you're a professional mountain biker, you're going to live in the mecca of UK mountain biking, aren't you? Mm. Which is why G and Rachel, his brother and sister, live here as well. And they're world champions, so the place must be good. All right, well, let's go see Dan. Then, Come yeah. on, then. Which way is it? Is this the right way? Believe it or not, he lives just up here. So who were the first renegades of mountain biking? There were these guys back in the late 60s, early 70s, who, in a way, invented mountain biking. They used to ride these old, kind of hybrid Frankenbike things that were known as clunkers. Without them, mountain biking may never have been born. It grew from there. Sean Palmer, bit of a renegade, bit of a game changer, because yeah. he basically came from the world of snowboarding, picked up a mountain bike, turns out he's pretty good, but he brought his own attitude, his own style and his own rules. Dan Atherton, as well, he's changing the sport with the courses he's building. It's making yeah. riders reevaluate how they're riding their bikes, because they've got to push their limits. They've never hit some of these courses before, and he's going to be a good man to talk to, I think. This is Dan. Good to see you. You've done enduro, BMX, four cross downhill, and you're doing your own thing now, but what's been your inspiration? A huge inspiration of mine has been Darren Bearclaw. I stayed with him on Vancouver Island, and I was pretty inspired by just the way he lives his life, really. And he's out there in the forest like this, and he kind of doesn't rely on other people for, for what he rides. He's, he's proactive, he's building. Is the building and the digging, is that a real integral, important side of, of bike riding? It's really exciting, you know, you can build bigger jumps, you can build faster jumps and you know even though we're pushing the sport as hard as we can there has to be consequences. Hard like last year pretty much all the jumps we built were too big you know you, you reach that boundary and you have to come back a bit but you know that's that's the way it progresses. So what, what are G and Rachel to today? Are they around? Yeah they're around they ride over here a lot now. So we were talking to Dan about his influences, as far as you guys are concerned. G, who, do you, who were you looking up to as a kid? You know, from a very young age, I remember looking at Nico Goulez, one of the fastest guys on the World Cup. You know, he won the World Cup overall, been able to pump out results year after year, and you know, that really caught my eye, that was, that was amazing. For me, it was a, a woman called Adele Croxton, a Brit, doing well at the World Cup. And she had this kind of presence and this style, like, she was awesome, you know, she was kind of quiet, but she was really good fun. She held her own with the boys, and she, she was just exactly what I wanted to do when I was growing up. You know, you, you guys have pushed the sport to say here. What's the next thing for mountain biking? The reason we build and the reason we push so hard is purely to feel that progression, you know? You know, so guys like Nico Vink who are pushing so hard in that area. I came from racing downhill like she and I, and like Dan said, progressing the sport by making things bigger, like massive jumps. He was always the, the rider's rider. I think we need to go speak to Nico then, don't we? Yeah, where is he then? Belgium, I think, boys. I'm really looking forward to meeting Nico Vink. Why is that then? Well, from what I hear, he's out there building these absolutely ridiculous jumps, which, by all accounts, is changing the face of mountain biking right now. Hi, Tim. How are you? Good. I always wanted to ride motocross, but my mom never wanted me to. So I ended up jumping bikes. You just want to go faster, or you want to jump bigger or more technical. At a certain point, you get used to what you do, and then you want to like, get better at it. It's just fun to create new stuff to ride. You think the jumps can get bigger? Yeah, I'm sure. Bigger than that? I'm sure you can. What you would need to make it happen is like a bigger window, 
like a bigger time spread. But if you, if you had like six months of like building on something, I'm sure you can create something way more interesting. I want to build something more technical. A longer line, bigger jumps, and then more creative features like berms and transfers and, and all that stuff. Rhythm changes, like slows down, speeds up again, you know, like just something. Other well, riders turn up here and have not seen the line that you've built. Are they a bit taken aback and they see it and come and go, oh, I'm not sure about this? Mostly they just go quiet. But at first it's kind of like, oh, is he serious? I, I don't think I'm doing it because of competition with what other people do. I just do it because I got some kind of vision I just want to realize. Yeah, it's hard to explain. It's, yeah. it's... But it's in there. So Dan and Nico, both rare breeds who can visualize something and then build it into a tangible, rideable thing. Yeah. And in doing so, they're unintentionally changing the sport. They're forging new boundaries. Well, that's the beauty of mountain bike, isn't it? It just takes a handful of people with motivation, creativity, and a clear vision, and it all goes off in a totally new direction. And that, my friend, is called progression.